Hello, and welcome to All There Is. I'm your host, Kelly Bargabas. Today, we have one of our Keep It Real episodes, where I talk to real people with real stories living a very real life. Today, that is Afua Boheni, and we are going to explore the topic and work of activism. What is it, why do we need it, and how do we do it? I've known Afua since she was about 14 years old and volunteered to work on my team in the children's ministry at the church we both attended. So I've known her for a very long time. We're both much older than that now. But honestly, our lives don't intersect anymore, except for on Facebook. And one of the silver linings I believe to social media is the connection we can keep with people who otherwise would be long lost to past seasons of our life. But Afu is one of those people who, even though we haven't talked in a long time or we haven't seen each other except virtually in our lives, don't really intersect that much on a day-to-day basis. She feels like family to me, and I think it is because we knew each other when we were young, and I know her mom and her sister, and she knows my parents and some of my other family members, and we belong to this amazing church together, and so I feel like I know her and where she comes from, and I think she feels the same about me. Now, Afua is a self-described activist, among other things. She's also a very accomplished professional woman who works in education, but she describes herself as an activist, and that intrigued me. And I thought it would be really interesting and timely to hear from her on activism, all in the spirit of witnessing the spectrum of human experience, of course, in order to shift and change our world. Now, if you are already thinking to yourself, oh, I'm not one of those people. I'm not an activist. I'm not going to march in the street. Activism isn't part of who I am. Please don't tune out yet. I challenge you to listen with an open mind and heart, and I think you may be surprised. You'll find out that activism at its core is really just wanting the world to be a just and equal place for all humans. And it starts with the desire to repair what's been broken in the world. And I believe that you want that just like I do. So without further ado, here's our conversation that Afua and I had a couple of weeks ago, and I hope you enjoy it. I am here with Afua Boheni, who is an educational practitioner, lifelong social justice advocate with 15 plus years probably of progressive experience within secondary and higher education institutions. As the daughter of two immigrant parents who raised her to believe that to whom much is given, much is required, which is one of my favorite scriptures too. She has dedicated the first quarter of her professional life influencing, impacting, and serving marginalized, disadvantaged, and vulnerable young people. During the course of her tenure within the field of education, she's held a multitude of administrative and instructional roles, such as an elementary school teacher, student affairs administrator, graduate assistant, adjunct professor, behavior support specialist, and most recently, a college counselor. Now, I know you probably have some updates to this. So, Afua, tell everybody who you are and what that first sentence means to you when you say your work reflects your heart. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, Yeah, so I actually um, work now as um, an administrator at SUNY Alfred State, and what my role is, I am a counselor, uh, academic counselor, and I work with the Educational Opportunity Program, which is one of the access programs that we have um, in New York State, and so I work with students who are primarily first-generation students, working-class students, um, and every intersection in between to help get them through school. Okay. It's the flip side of what I was doing working with students to get them into college, I'm now working with the population of students to get students through college. My role really for me sort of exists kind of in the intersection of making things possible and um, and kind of creating a pathway, right, for people. Mm. So um, for me, my work reflecting my heart is that I really believe in, I really believe in equality and I really believe in justice. Um, and I really believe that we've got to figure out a way to make that possible for everybody. Mm. So the work that I found myself doing is in trying to widen those spaces, right? Like if things are, you know, if things are too tight, how do we open this door just a little bit more? So more mm-hmm. people here, right? Right. Um, I was by virtue of the fact of who my parents were, my parents were both college educated, both professionals. I was given a lot. I had a really great education. And so for me, when I was growing up, because I grew up in church, that notion of too much is given much is required stuff with me. And so I knew like, whatever I do, it has to have some type of impact, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so it's not enough for me to just be like, I got all these toys for myself, right? I got a really good education. I got all these things that I have. What, what do you do with that? Like, it's not, stuff is not just for you. Mm -hmm. I knew that. And that was always kind of the thing that pushed me towards where can I have an impact? Where can I do work that matters, right? And makes things um, a little bit better, right? And so when people come behind me, it's not so much of a struggle anymore. Mm -hmm. I always thought of it as like, as I go forward, you know, you then you turn around and you still lift and bring other people with you. Mm. It's kind of, that's kind of been the thing um, ever since I was a child in my home. Um, I think because my parents are both immigrants and they come from cultures that are collective, like you go forward, but everybody else has to go forward too. Mm. And so I got that in addition to being in church and hearing that message about too much is given, much is required. And so um, I knew that from a very early age, and that's the work that I've been involved in. Um, and then that's led to connections with other people that you know I've either taught with or worked with um, who both have a vision of the world that I think is beautiful, right? That's about equity and about justice. And so that's mm -hmm. how my path has moved in the world. That's really beautiful. I love that and resonates so much. And I loved what you said about, you know, that you find a way forward and you elevate yourself, but you bring everybody else with you. And when you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, I feel like in our American culture, that is the piece that's missing. It's like, we're all fighting for success and we're all fighting for our piece of the pie, but we don't always think about everybody else around us and making sure that we all yep. have the opportunities and the success and how much better we would all be if we brought everybody uh, yeah. along for the ride with us. So that's great. And then the other thing I was thinking about as you were talking is, you know, and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this topic with you today is, you know, somebody like me, and I, I know there's a lot of people like me who feel very passionately, who agree, who agree with your statement on, you know, you believe in equality and justice for everyone. I'm just going to talk about myself. I have all these really strong convictions and passion and love but don't always know what I can do with it. You know, mm -hmm. I don't always know, like, how can I help? How can I be part of the solution? How can I create change? Especially if, you know, you're someone who is not in a position of, of power or, you know, you don't think you're in a position of power, like how you're just a regular old person who wants so much for the world to be different, but mm -hmm. really don't know how to go about doing that. That's why I thought, you know, as I was, again, looking into the Afua Boheni and who you are today, one of the things I saw on your website was that you describe yourself as an activist. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that would be a really interesting topic to talk about today of active activism, what it is, why do we need it? And how do you do it? How does a, a person get started in something like that. So that's where I really want to hear from you and your perspective on that and what it means to you. What is activism? I think, so my favorite, I think my favorite quote about activism is actually from Alice Walker, very famous, you know, novelist and mm -hmm. said, you know, activism is the rent that we pay for living on earth. And oh. it's attributed to her as quoted as saying that. So what is your service to humanity, right? Like what, 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 what do you do besides you know, I go to work, I do, what, what is your service to the rest of the world, right? Um, and so I always think about activism as what it is that I owe, right, to make this planet like a better place. Mm. And so I have a lot, I know a lot. And so what am I doing with that? What am I doing that makes, uh, you know, Dr. King, I think is quoted as saying that life's most pressing and persistent question is what are you doing for other people? Something, something in that vein. And so what am I doing for other people, right? Um, other people who don't look like me. And I think, so I think like that's been the biggest thing um, is figuring out uh, what it means. Like, it's not just enough to do for people who look like you. It's also, you have to do for people who don't look like you, who don't mm -hmm. come from that you do. Otherwise you're, you're really just doing for just, you know, your small, your small area. In, in being in grad school, we talked about activism as being about like social change, right? So larger change that happens for society, right? when you look and you see systems that are broken and i think we have seen i think one of the things the pandemic did is reveal so much so many things that are broken right mm -hmm. different culture so when you look at systems that are broken um how do you change that right and so where do you where do you start and so activism is really what 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 so what steps or series of steps or actions do you take to change systems that are broken 
and you can do individual things. And I think the individual things are important. But when you're talking about like systemic change, like policy change or economic change, I think those things have to come collectively, largely because you have to be able to leverage right power. And that comes with a mass of people, right? It's, you know, so I know individual people, but then there's individual people who know other people, right? And so as we come together, we realize like, oh, we have a critical mass of people with knowledge, with resources, with access, with information. Now we can do something with that, right? And we can actually put pressure where it matters, right? But I think it's a consistent, it's a it's like a continued struggle. So like you never just stop and go, okay, so I'm done with the activism. Like it's a, it's a consistent effort of figuring out how do you do that? And I think a lot, people do it in different ways. Some people use their art as activism, right? Their art speaks to the human condition. It speaks to what needs to change. Mm -hmm. and I think I've done that brilliantly. Um, some people use their writing as activism, right? What they write what they write about, the social issues they write about, that they want to make sure people know. That is another form, I think, teaching at the university level, because I taught at Syracuse for a number of years as an adjunct, is that even teaching is activism, right? So sometimes, you know, I the only space that I was in where we were having these conversations and we were engaging, what does it mean, right, to live in a world and live in the world in a just way, was in my class, right? It was in the classes I was teaching. Mm -hmm. And it didn't occur to me that like that's work that has to be done, right? People don't just know how to do do things justly. Like that's not a concept that we engage with all the time. And so I realized that my class, how you know, once a week or twice a week was the place where this conversation was happening. Something that I said or something that that I that I did in concert with my co-instructor would in some way have an impact. So if a student walked out of my class and they wanted to be different and live differently in the world, that's work that had to be done, right? Mm -hmm. When I was teaching students and, and we were having conversations with students at the high school level, because um, the program I worked with at Syracuse had a, had, a, had a partnership with a high school teacher, primarily a lot of the work that I did was allowing students, particularly students of color, to bear witness to their own world, right? To be able to be like, this is the world that I live in and interrogate that and ask questions about like, why is this how our community gets treated, right? Mm -hmm. have the tools and the language, right? To talk about what's happening. And then to say, well, I wanna change that, right? There were no other spaces that those things were happening in, right? And so I we had created actually was that space for there to be that conversation and for you to be actually able to look at the conditions of your world and say, yeah, I don't like that, or I want a different world. And, um, but people have to, that's, that's like practice, right? So that's what I mean by activism is a practice. That's a practice. Like you have to learn the language and you have to be able to talk about um, oppression and be able to talk about injustice and then be able to look at it and figure out, so how do we work against this, right? How do we strive against this? Mm -hmm. Make things better. And so it took me a while to realize that part of what I was doing was sort of the education piece, right? The consciousness raising piece of activism, which is, you know, helping people become aware, right? And I think we've had moments and incidents where people have become aware, you know, as we sit and, and think about George Floyd, right? I think that that was a moment that was, was a huge awareness for a lot of people. I think a lot, I think a lot of white people in particular, had, it had not crystallized. That was a moment, I think, for a lot of people that crystallized. Police brutality, those are issues that, that Black people, brown people, indigenous people, we know about, right? This mm -hmm. has been for some time, but I don't think other people did, right? So sometimes there is the conversation of starting with, so there's the consciousness raising, right? Like waking people up and people becoming aware. And there's some critical incident that happens in your life or some critical incident that happens maybe in your lifetime that you go, oh, wait, that's, I have, I have, real questions about how that happens, right, in, in our country. Um, but there are so many other, there are so many other issues. Um, I often wonder to myself how we are as Americans, we are in, you know, what is justifiably been probably one of the wealthiest nations in the world, but children go hungry at night. Those are the questions um, that I think as I got older and I left, honestly, I think as I left, as I left my own home, I left church, I went to school, I was a history major. And so I had like a lot of time to reflect on history and um, not as like an event, but as something that helps us understand where we are. And I kept going, yeah, but people had to do work for things to be different, right? <laughs> people had to do work in order for us to like even get to the point where certain laws exist or certain rights exist, like people had to do work, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the work of activism. That was really my kind of place that it all made sense to me. I was fortunate enough to study, like my concentration was African-American history. And so I spent all my time studying what it was that my people did 
And, um, and so I was like, this is how this gets done. You know, people work in collective unity with each other, people organize, right? People leverage relationships, people leverage uh, spaces that they're in, um, but nothing comes by way of just the individual person, right? Like people have to come together. Um, and so the lear just learning and spending all that time realizing like, you know, how people organized was really influential and important to me because I realized like that that is really kind of the crux of it. And then in my own, I think, practice was finding the space to be like, okay, here's what I want to do. And I was very strong and already knew, okay, I wanted to work in education and, and I want to do whatever it is that I can possibly do to make opportunities exist and make opportunities grow and accessible to people. Then when you start kind of figuring out, well, okay, what does my own journey look like, right? There's two things, I think one is courage and one is risk. And I, I think the, the, the moment where you realize that you're about to uh, say something or call attention to something that's wrong, I think is the moment where you have that, that's where the courage comes in, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really gonna say this and I'm really gonna do this and this is really a step I'm gonna take. And so I had to learn like that piece by itself, right? Because there's people that you admire, right? There's people that certainly I admire for having courage. You know, John Lewis is one of people that I admire, right? Like knowing his story and, and then all the work that he did in his life, right? In government. And, you know, there's, there's many people, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer, who's, a, who's an old time uh, civil rights uh, voting activist, right? Like in the South, her story is super impactful. So there's lots of people, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who I think was an amazing champion for women's rights. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those people. But then when I realized like nobody talks to you about the courage piece, right? And the and the risk piece. Like nobody talks to you about like what that means, right? So the courage to actually say what, what you think is right, right? And and do what you think is right. And then the other piece is um the courage to come back to the table, right? Like I think there's so many times when I would be teaching and I would we would do things or I would be with students or students would have protests. I very, very, very much remember students having protests at Syracuse because there were just so many issues around identity. And I remember showing up to protest for students because I knew that it mattered to them that I was there. Um, they're in a vulnerable position. I am faculty. And so it mattered that my body was there. It mattered that my voice was there. But the amount of times that I had to call really deep on my courage, mm. because like, oh God, there's going to be consequences for this. Mm. Oh, right? Like nobody tells you that, right? Mm -hmm. About doing the work. So, you know, so I just was like, nah, like I hear them. I understand what they're talking about. I'm showing up. You might not get that promotion, right? Somebody might say something to you or might tell you, watch yourself here because now, right now, like you're, you know, and so how many times your, you know, your reputation, right? Um, becomes, becomes a huge conversation of risk, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is going to have an impact. People are going to say things. You're going to be known as that person who's always screaming at the top of your voice in a shrill, you know, like style, you can't do this. I think that piece nobody talks to you about you know i think people look at at some of the biggest examples of of activists and think like oh well i want to be like that person they have no idea <laughs> no idea what that means right mm -hmm. um they have no idea like within yourself where you have to go and have have courage and have conviction um and say no this is wrong and as long as I have ability, breath, opportunity, I'm going to X, Y, and Z. And then you have to figure out, so how do my actions line up with what I say, right? So I think so much of what, when we have big systemic injustices, there's always, you know, the moment where everybody comes out and makes these statements. Our company stands against, let's just start with your own company, right? Like, look at your own company. How diverse is your own company? How diverse are the people that work there, right? Like, whose perspectives get acknowledged, don't get acknowledged? Like, and then when you begin doing that work, where you sort of have to ask those questions that becomes really that becomes really difficult because then now it gets down to like the practical every day of not just saying we believe in a world that's equal okay so what are we doing to create that world the reason why i think you have to do it collectively is because you need other vision makers right so you need other people who see and say yeah i can imagine that world mm -hmm. right right so it can be just if it's just you in your own head but when you meet other people who go yeah that's the world i believe in and that's I mean, no but that's the world i also believe in right you, that like you coalesce that energy right mm -hmm. okay so what now how do we what do we begin doing because you believe that that's the world we should live in i believe that's the world we should live in you believe the world then you realize if there's three of us there's probably a whole lot more of us you know there's I think because growing up in church, you know, we would always talk about there's always a remnant someplace in the land, right? Mm -hmm. And 
it's really people who are who come into this space of activism i think really is always the like there's always somebody someplace couple people someplace who see this mm -hmm. and those people have to come together right because part of what we know is that like you know one put a thousand in flight two can pretend that right like but the power really comes in the critical mass right mm -hmm. so that is you ha it has to be collective i don't think there's any other way to put pressure on multiple points right unless it's collective mm -hmm. uh, and then it has to be consistent right it has to it has to be consistent we'll see certain things go forward and then we see things come back and i go what I thought we made progress on this, you know, looking at our culture. I, I thought we understood this, right? And then, oh, maybe not so much, right? So that right. The, the, has to be consistent, right? And, and progressive in terms of moving forward, right? So as, as soon as we open the door for one thing, we have to keep opening the door for other things, right? It right. Can't, can't ever just stop and go, okay, well, we figured that women's rights thing out. So now we're done. I think we all understand, you know, okay, I want to live in a world where there's not, there's not pay inequity, right? Like that women get paid the same for doing the same job as men, right? Like, but then, but then what do we do about that? Right. That requires interrogating structures and systems and saying like, if we have policies that allow this to continue, those policies have to be actively shifted mm -hmm. to be moved out of the way. That's work people have to do. And I think there are people who are looking at, you know, different areas and industries and asking questions about why is this industry still predominantly so white and so male or why is this industry predominantly only held these people hold this much wealth and everybody you know like i think there's people are asking those questions and so i think that's a that's a great place to start then you got to figure out so then who are the people that collectively see this and want to make a change um and you know i think that there's lots of people that do lots of things there are people that start organizations because that's their answer to an issue but then there are also people who join right they do their research they do their work and they find out who is actually doing the work that they say that they're doing, and that is going to contribute to X, Y, and Z cause, right? So who is actually really doing the work of supporting communities of color? And I wanna be involved, and this is what I wanna do. Um, and then you gotta, I think that there's a place of showing up, knowing that you don't know things. This is a huge thing with activism. Like, I don't know what I don't know, and listening, and I'm gonna get it wrong, and I'm just gonna need to make my peace with that, right? Like, cause mm -hmm. I'm not, and so, so much of, what was helpful for me, particularly in the space of, of teaching and then and then being involved at the university when I worked at Syracuse University was like unlearning, right? There were so many things that in the process of teaching students, I had to learn. And then there were things that I had to unlearn because I was like, I don't know what I don't know. And so in order for me to more effectively support or be in solidarity, really in solidarity with X, Y, and Z, folks, I'm going to have to sit down and, and, and realize there's some things I need to, to come to an awareness about. And so that takes like that takes time. Uh, it takes, I think, intentional effort. And then also just always being able to be like, OK, so I missed it there. I, I need to apologize or like this. I came in the wrong direction. Right. Because I think sometimes when you get excited, then you think you know exactly what you need to do. <laughs> mm, right. Right. And you don't always know exactly what you need to do. And so, so really learning to take your cues from people who have been out in front and been doing this work for a really long time um, and never, do not showing up being like, okay, so I'm here now, party can get started. What do you want me to do? Like, j just like sit and listen because you, this is not an experience you know of. Mm -hmm. You have other experiences, but you can't come in here and assume that those are parallel or similar. And so that was like a lot of learning, learning the language for talking about what are the issues that we're even, we're even confronting. And then how do I help? What is it that you want me to do? Like that was usually like my very first first thing as opposed to here's what I'm going to do because I can be very take charge. No, no, but here, what is it you want me to do, right? Mm -hmm. The role you want me to play, right? right. Um, and then realizing at times when it, you know, when it matters, and I certainly had to kind of figure out when does it matter that like you show up? And I don't just mean like metaphorically show up, I mean physically show up. Like is your body on the line? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, is your is your reputation like when does it matter that you show up? And so like when I in those moments when I knew that students were protesting for things that they had been longtime issues that had just been systemic issues in the university setting, I was like, it matters that you're there. One for many reasons. I mean, I taught classes all about identity, but um, I also knew that there were many students who were who were I think wanted to confront but also felt i think you know certainly nervous there this is a big much bigger power structure than they are and so when they when they look out and they see that there are faculty that are there 
that um, are in support of what they're doing and are I'm here, right? My body is here. I'm not just here metaphorically, like you go, I'm mm -hmm. here, my body is here. Um, that makes a difference. At the end of the day, what, what side of history do I wanna be on? I don't wanna be on the side of history that saw things and did nothing. Um, new things were wrong, new things were oppressive and just said, well, you know, doesn't have anything to do with me, so. <laughs> right, doesn't affect my life, right? So, yeah. I don't have to worry about any of that. I think, and I think that that's a big, I think that's one of the biggest areas where I think people fall down. So I think constantly like this notion of, I don't, this doesn't have anything to do with me. So I don't have any part to play in this, right? Mm -hmm. Like the big misconception. Well, I'm not a person of color, so this doesn't impact my life. Well, yes, it does, right? You may not be aware of it, but it does. So I, these conversations that would always happen with my students about, well, you are a person of color, you're white. You've never been told that before. I thought about it that way, but you are right. And so, and the, your world has been shaped by that. Just like people, just like me as a, as a person who is black, my world has been shaped by that understanding. It's also the way that people read me without knowing anything about me, right? And so, so we can't pretend that that's not what's happening. So I always go back to, well, do you want? I don't know that I want to live in a world where we can destroy each other with nuclear bombs. That's not a world I want to live in. It's just not. I don't want to live in a world where children are not able to have a quality education and become contributing members of society. That is not a world I want to live in. And so I think when people can can see that and say, well, they can agree with can agree with with those ideas, then it becomes about, so what do you do to change that? But I think the misconception is, you know, gender discrimination or gender violence is a is a female problem. No, it's not a female problem, society problem. This is a men's issue too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So is the this constant thing of thinking that if at the end of the day, part of what I, I think about in, in, in doing any type of activist work is, can I make it possible for people to live to their fullest potential, right? And live dignified lives. If I can do that through anything that I do, that means that that has to be for everybody, not just for my community. Of, mm -hmm. That means this is an all hands on deck project. Like everybody has to be figuring out if it's true that everybody deserves to live a dignified life, and to be able to live their fullest human potential out, that means every single one of us has to be involved in making that possible. Mm -hmm. Where we can find it individually and then where we can collectively be involved, we have, to, we have to find how to do that. But just saying, well, it doesn't affect my children, it doesn't affect my community, my job is okay, it, that's, not, that's not enough. The world is not really changed by what you, what you say, the world is changed by what you do. And mm -hmm. so if you say you believe in justice or equality, what do you do towards that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a nice statement and it's something I teach my children that it's, it's a, then it's just a lofty idea that floats in the air. Doesn't have any teeth, doesn't have any wings. Um, we're not, you know, we're not on the front lines of anything. We're not, we're not advocating for any policy changes. Like we're not doing any of that because it's just an idea that we teach people, but ideas actually like have to become reality, right? They have to have tangible, like movement in the world in order for that to matter because racism has material consequences for people's lives right gender discrimination has real consequences for people's lives uh homophobia has real consequences for people's lives right so just saying i believe in an equal world without doing anything to change that actually doesn't help because people that experience oppression on the other side they really really have tangible things that happen to them right mm -hmm. and how do we shift that paradigm in our world so that that's not that's not what's happening I think it takes practice. I think it, it takes it takes work. So many things were happening with the pandemic. There were more people that were starting to go, oh, okay, right? So this is wrong. And you know, I think there's more people that saw things that they had not seen before um, with the pandemic breaking things wide open. And so then you start to realize there were more people that were looking and going, we have some real problems in our country. We have some real things that we need to address. So how do we, at the end of the day, how do we repair what it is that racism, sexism, homophobia, whatever is you want to add broke in the world, how do we repair that? Right. That's activism. How do we right. repair the original condition of this planet of humanity, I am certain, was not that this would be what it is, right? That we would have as much racial violence as we have, as much gender violence as we have, as much inequity as we have, as much uh, class difference as we have. Like, I, I fundamentally do not believe that was God's vision for the world that he created. I don't. So how do we get back to that, right? Mm. Um, activism for me is that pathway back to that. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so that's pathway great. back to that.
Yeah. That's great. And do you think it's a calling? In other words, do you think certain people are called to live a life of activism at that level? Or do you think as human beings, we all are called at, at some level and it's just how we participate? I think there are people who certainly might be in the front lines. They are the, the people that we kind of, I think, always think about as having, you know, done these magnificent things, right? Well, you know, whole movements of people uh, or pull together whole movements of people. But I don't think that because you're not Malcolm X, because you're not King, because you're not Fannie Lou Hamer, I don't think that absolves you from figuring out what your work is, right? Where, where activism situates in your life. Um, there is something, someplace, somewhere that you can be doing in, co in collective energies with other people that shifts the paradigm and alters history so that, you know, the moral arc of the universe does bend towards justice. There's something you can be doing. You have to be. I think that's what people also think. I have to be Angela Davis, or I have to be Nikki Giovanni, or I have to be, you know, whomever, Che Guevara. Like, I have to be these people. No, you don't have to be those people. Like, those people happen to have a very visible role and be out in front. But you don't have to be those people to do activist work. I think you have to look at situations and you have to really just say to yourself, is this just? Is this right? Is this the vision of the world that we should have, that, that we want to live in? If the answer to those questions are no, then you have to figure out, so how do I change that? Mm -hmm. How do I find other people who believe that and will work with me on changing that? Mm -hmm. it, you don't, but you don't have to be... A, a civil rights leader or a leader of a particular movement, which is, I think, what a lot of people think in order to be an activist. I think what you choose to do when you see injustice and how you choose to address that is where that starts. I don't think of myself as having a, a, a big platform. I, I just have, I just know that there are certain things that are just, when I look at them, they're just not okay. Um, they trouble my spirit. And I have stuff within my hand that I can do. Mm -hmm. I have knowledge that I have gained that I can use. And so that is what I will do until I expire out of life. I have that. If I have the ability to do that, then that's what I should do. So I don't think it's ever about like, you know, me being this major political or historical figure. I really think it's about looking at the world and saying, I want a different world than this. I want a better world than this. Mm -hmm. um, and so. How can I make that possible? And I can't do that on my own because I'm one person. So, you know, there can be small ripples of things, but there are multiple people who, once you start to link arms with, you realize they also want to see a different world. Mm -hmm. And then you figure out how you do that and what that, what that looks like. But I think anybody can be, can do activist work and can be in, in whatever field they're in, whether that is in, whether that's in media, whether that's in education, I think anybody, everybody can. Um, I think that that's what makes the difference. I think people in every different field that can figure out where they can have an impact. Um, there will be people that I think sort of will always seem like they have that calling from beyond, right? <laughs> the kind of lead right. of everybody. But that doesn't mean because you're not those people that you're absolved from, from the work of repairing what's been broken in the earth, right? So much of what's been broken in the earth because of oppression. So you, we spent a lot of time talking about your passions for changing the world and getting the world back to this, where it should be. What has this focus on activism done for you personally? How has it changed Afua? Oh, gosh. Um, I think it's given me, I think, a really, really different way to interact with um, humanity and and the human experience i think there's there's so much of being involved in uh working with people across lines and working with people in different ways to make change that fundamentally shifts how you understand people right people don't they're not just groups to you right people people are hum maybe the humanness of people um and so there's a real i think love for humanity that like in a radical way um, that I have never experienced except for being involved um, in activist work. Like, and so uh, people, particularly young people are, cause that's the, the area where are like super precious to me. And so um, when I think about that and, and just encountering people, not as what somebody has presented them to me as, but in connection with folks, I think it has deepened my awareness of 
humanity. It has given me a larger world, a bigger vocabulary. It has given me people to work alongside of. And, um, and, and I just think a, a, like a real radical acceptance of people that I, that I didn't learn growing up because I think I was always kind of taught, you know, we treat people fairly, but then there were also things that I think being, being in church, I was always taught, well, we don't associate with those type of people, mm -hmm. we don't with those type of people right? Activism blew all of that away mm -hmm. because there is no, the, you radically love and accept people. Mm. So that, that changed me um, profoundly because I was working with, because I worked with students and, and continue to work with students, the understanding of sort of what it is now to be a young person and, and as many things as young people deal with and live with, I think brought me to a whole different, just a whole different place of, of love, right? Like, and, and, and so, so much of it, um, letting go of judgment. I think when you work with people and you come to know what their struggles are and you come to really be involved in making the world a better place, you can't judge people that you want to be connected with. And I, and I think it gave me a really, really wonderful community of folks to be connected to who share in, in wanting to, you know, move the world forward in a really uh, beautiful way. So uh, and I just think that it taught me a lot of things that I, you know, thought I was a really accepting person. And then, and then, and then I realized, no, you're not so much. Not yeah. so much. You think yeah. you are, but not so much, right? Because now you're being presented with something that's totally different and totally new. And you have to decide, are you going to actually join your voice and be a part of fighting for what's right? Or are you are you still holding on to judgments or things that you were taught were wrong about this group of people, right? Yeah. So yeah. activism was like the place where so much of that got like stripped. And so that that's the hard thing, but also the really good thing as well about it. Great. I love that radical love and acceptance. And we might have already answered this, but I wanted to ask you, what is the biggest misperception people have about activism or being an activist? One, thinking that you have to be, um, you know, some sort of icon or some person that, you know, has like extraordinary power and whatever to, to, to do activist work. Um, and I think the other one is thinking that, you know, I think people oftentimes only think of activism like as marching in the streets or as protests. And there are a lot of people who do a lot of activist work that are not marching in the streets and aren't protesting. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that those things aren't important. They super are important, but there are a lot of people who, like I said, start organizations or, um, you know, they, they do work that um, has far reaching effects and implications for shifting criminal justice policy, for shifting economic policy, and they're not necessarily marching in the streets. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people think, well, I am not marching the streets. So then like, what am I supposed to be doing? And, and that they can't be involved if they're not doing that. Um, and I, I think that that's completely not true. I think that people uh, look and see the ways that they can, can put their efforts um, into stuff that they really want to see changed and be different in the world. And so I do think there's a lot of that. Well, I'm not in the streets. So like, what do I, you know, what am I like, what am I doing? So I'm not an activist. And I think for the longest time, that's what I, my perception also too, was, you know, a lot of like, well, you know, some people aren't ready or they aren't at the place where they're comfortable being in the streets. And so it was a lot of like, oh, I have to go out. No, not necessarily. You know what I mean? There's other things that you can do. Right. But I think because that's what people have seen, they always think to themselves, that's, oh, that's what an activist is. And so then they don't, then they don't think of themselves as being as, as that, or as having any role to play in activism because they're not marching in the streets or because right. they're. Right. So true. That's great. And I, I would agree with that. And, and I think you've already answered this, but one of the things I was thinking, if I'm listening to this and I'm thinking to myself, okay, all that sounds great, but I'm not in education. I, you know, work in a grocery store and I, let's say I just run the cash register at a grocery store. And I feel very convicted about a lot of things, but what can I do? Nobody's listening to me. I can't do anything. And I think you've already answered this. Like you find other people who think like you do. Anybody can ask questions. If you see yep. something going on in your company, you can ask yep. questions about it. You can say, hey, yep. why do we do this? Why, why do I look around and everyone around me is white? You yep. know, what's our HR policy on hiring? How do we make sure we have a diverse hiring policy. I mean, anybody can ask those questions. Yeah. And I think we don't oftentimes think that we have the power to do that, right? To, to say like, well, actually, I want to know why it is that we do what it is. And how come in the last three years, everybody that's been promoted has been a man? You know how many times I've said things, I've said things out loud and thought to myself, oh God, if we shouldn't said that. I've had people come to me later and say, I really appreciate that you 
that you brought that up, right? Right. <laughs> you're never the only person. I, I've always felt you're the people who come back and say, I was thinking what you were thinking. I just wasn't, I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. So then like, let's get together and put our heads together. So let's ask them for some transparency, right? I think that's like one of the hugest things is to ask people to be transparent about what they do, because if it doesn't come out in the water, it comes out in the wash, right? Yeah. And so, asking those questions, that usually is a start, right? And you realize there are some practices that aren't going on. People can make phone calls. You can make phone right. calls. Does, does, does your store do this? Is this the right. policy over here? And why don't we have, right? Like those, but I think a lot of times the the feeling is like, well, we can't do that. We can't go, right? Because because systems seem so much bigger than us. Well, we right. can't ask questions, but that's actually where it starts, right? A lot of times it's asking those questions. And when you start to notice discrepancies, then, okay, we got to, we need some change here, yeah. right? There's here. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that you talked about too is, you know, along with asking questions is listening mm -hmm. and being open to the fact that you don't know everything. And yeah. I think as human beings, that I think is where a lot of people just have a hard time yeah. admitting that they don't, you know, we don't know everything and yeah. just being open to other people's experiences opinions and and that fact that we don't have all the answers that can be so powerful and i would imagine even as we ask questions and it can be a little scary that's where the courage comes in and you talked yeah. about courage that was one of the first things you talked about is you've got to muster up that courage to start small ask those questions wherever it is that you are spending your days and your weeks and your life you know volunteer at your company to look into it how can i help start this conversation about whatever it is that you're witnessing. So the huge piece is, um, is like bearing witness to other people's experience. Mm -hmm. I think we lack that in, in this country in particular, like the ability to do that. Yeah. Um, we want to avoid it. Yeah. We don't want to like, like the real, um, the real parts of stuff where you just look at things and you go, wow. Right. Like, I think that that's what, for me, it, you know, anytime something happens to a young person, it, it breaks me. That's just my, it just does. And so I think, you know, the genius of me being in education is I think that God has time and time again, been able to bring young people in my path. And, and when they, you just look at what is happening, I go, oh, but you have to bear witness to that. Right. And not, not run away from that. Um, because you can't, you really can't do work to change things that you don't want to witness. You have to witness that part before you start working to do any of the repair work. And I, and I think we've got it. We have to start there. So I think that that's so key. Yeah, I do too. And, and I see that a lot. And again, it takes courage to yeah. bear witness. And I can remember when the George Floyd murder happened and there was, there was a lot of video around it, which was mm -hmm. so disturbing and so yeah. necessary though. And I found people in my life and in my circle and who I talked to and they hadn't watched it. Yeah. And, yeah. and I said to the, and, and their answer was not that they didn't care. It was like, oh, that's so awful. I can't watch it. And, yeah. uh, and I did say to a couple of people, no, you, you have to watch it. You have to watch you it. Have to yeah. watch it. You have to see this. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I'm a firm believer in, and it wasn't just George Floyd. I've thought it, you know, there's this horrible documentary about Jeffrey Epstein on yes. Netflix. And I made myself watch it and I watched the Michael Jackson documentary and, and I was a big fan of his and I would talk to people about it and they're like, oh, I can't watch that. It's too can't, yeah, it's too yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, you, you have, we have to watch that so we can figure out how to make sure it doesn't happen again. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. We have to, we're not going to learn how to change things and make things actually right in the world right unless we engage those things but i i do i hear that a lot as well like oh i can't oh I, that's too but i think there's a luxury when when it's not you and when you have some form of privilege to be like i'm removed from that you know yeah that, yeah I, oh no i don't ask me to engage that that's yeah. so yeah but i want you to be disturbed because if you're disturbed right and you can't get away from being disturbed so i hear that as well a lot and i i think that that's the trouble with like people with with bearing that witness is is it it's disturbing for people and sometimes like the what i learned in the process was living with that feeling of being disturbed was actually where that that essence of like all right so where are some other folks or let me start talking to other people right just and sometimes just in talking to other people about how i was so disturbed by what i was seeing happening to young people or whatever, was where i then found other people were also around the same mindset and being like is there something we can do can i be involved with this organization is there a project i can give to work with advocate with something other than just saying i'm disturbed 
But I think that's actually an okay place to start. Like sometimes yeah. when you're disturbed, that's when you're waking up to like, what is going on in the world? This yeah. is really frightening. We don't want this to be, you know, the experience for generations to come. And I think that's an okay place to start. I think it's just hard for people. I think it's really hard for people to to witness that, right? Like yeah. uh, and come to terms th yeah. th that this is is real and it's happening. Yeah. So that's great. I, I like that if there are people out there listening and they don't know where to start, that they can start with just committing to bearing witness, yeah. to being informed and to, you know, watch the video, read the newspaper article, ask questions, talk to people who yeah. look differently than you do and find out what's going on. That's a great, great place to start. Yeah. Okay. So last question, and this doesn't have to tie back to activism. What is the most significant aha moment you've had in your life? The most significant life lesson you've learned that you wish everybody could just know and learn like you have? I mean, this is going to sound really simplistic, but I think these days I have two jobs. One is to love God and the other one is to love people, period. Mm. If I walk out my life, love people and love God. There's nothing else I need to do. If I do those two things, that is taken care of. Yeah. And this is old school, but there's, a, uh, I think it's Salt and Pepper who have a song and, and, and I don't even remember which song it is, but there is a lyric in there where they say, um, you know, there's only one judge and that one judge and that's God. So chill and let my father do his job. For me, that's where it's come down to. It's, this is not my job to be, I'm not in the judgment business. I'm in the love business. I'm not in the judgment business. Yeah. I don't love God. If I do those two things, I don't have anything. I really have nothing else to worry about. I really don't. Thank you so much. This has been such a great conversation. Yep. So I really appreciate your perspective and you're just shining a light on this topic and how necessary it is. There's so many good nuggets in everything that you said. So I can't wait actually to go back and listen to it. And as I'm editing it, pull out all those nuggets. I mean, it's just, there's so much good stuff in here. Well, this was a great conversation. Thank you so much for asking me to have it. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to this important conversation. I know that I learned a lot and I was inspired. You know, like I told Afua when we were talking, I am one of those people who wants desperately to make the world a better place. But oftentimes I do find myself thinking, you know, what do I do? What can I do? I'm so upset, but I feel powerless and I don't know where to start. But after listening to our conversation again, I ha I've listened to it a couple of times now, I have some clear direction and I'm going to challenge myself to, to continue to bear witness to horrible and sad and devastating things that are happening. I'm going to bear witness. I'm going to watch the videos. I'm going to listen to the news and ask questions like, is this okay with me? Is this the world I want to live in? Do I want to live in a world where this can happen? And if the answer is no, I will find the courage to begin the work of making changes and trying to change the world. I'm going to find people who think like I do. I'm going to ask provocative questions. I'm going to join others who are working towards the same vision of the world that I have. I'm going to find the courage to find people to link arms with. I'm going to find the courage to show up. I know that I want to be on the right side of history. I want my life to be one that works to repair what's been broken in this world. Are you with me? I hope so. I think you will be after, you know, now that you've heard this conversation. So thanks again for tuning in. And that's it for this episode. You can find more information and contact me by going to my website, kellybargabas.com slash podcast. If you want to reach out to Afua, I can connect you and make that happen. So just let me know. And I'm going to add a link to my website to one of the organizations that Afua sits on the board of and is passionately working with. It is called the Image Initiative. And this organization aims to enlighten, engage, and empower young women of color and Syracuse, New York. So you can check that out as well. Thanks again for listening. If you got something useful out of all there is today, please share with your friends, especially this conversation. It's really important. And actually sharing this podcast episode could be a way to start a difficult conversation, maybe in an area where you're seeing something happen and you don't like it and you want to change it, but don't know how, maybe sharing this conversation is a way to start. So I encourage you to do that. And until we meet again, take care.